And what I always recommend for girls all over the world and for everybody, when you're married, you must have a second honeymoon every year. Every year? Every year. And you go, if you, if you were poor, you, you, you go in a, a tent, and you leave us anyhow, you leave the children with mommy anyway, and you go away, if possible, to the place where you went. I went to Paris, where I always was, and we had the, then you, you go to bed after lunch, you have a very good lunch, and then go to bed, because men are at their best in the middle day. And then uh, in the evening, you can go out and see your and you're in no hurry, you see. You go anywhere and see anything, but you're in no hurry to get back because you had a wonderful time all the afternoon. And it works beautifully, and people write to me and say, you're absolutely right, now our wedding, which was cracking up, is now absolutely wonderful. And I love him, I love him, I love him. And they write to me all the time saying it's wonderful. You're always wearing pink. Well, that, that again is something exciting that happened to me. When I was on my first honeymoon, I went to, to, uh, to uh, what's the name of the place, and where all of the people are buried. And I found a man sitting on Tutankhamun, just found Tutankhamun's tomb, sitting on it with Lord Carnarvon, who he got it. And it was always very pretty. He took me around the Valley of the Kings and showed me all the things like that. And particularly this wonderful pink. And so I we all pink. A few years later, the Americans woke up to the fact it was slightly good for the brain. And they printed a whole prison pink. And then I went out and had the awards. And everybody wore pink. And because they were in a hurry, and of course some of them weren't really of it, some of them came in their bathing dress. <laughs> anyway, it was a great success. And you'll see, I've worn it ever since, because if I don't wear pink, people say, you're not in pink. Why aren't you in pink? Exactly. Because I'm very curious yeah. happening. So how many times have you been really, really in love? Oh, several times. I've had, I was looking last night before you came, I've had 76, 76, no, 60, 65 questions of the people wanting to marry me. I married my 50th, first of all, and um, I had my first proposal of marriage nine days after I left school. <laughs> I was rather frightened. I ran away. My mother said, you'll have to get used to it. And I did. <laughs> if you mean for real love, every man, I get most wonderful letters from men saying, I've always looked for real love, and you write about real love. And they really feel marvelous from my, le my books because it's the love they want. But you see, what is wrong is women are so busy having a career today, they don't look after their men. If you, if you have a husband and young children, you have to look after them. What you mustn't do is rush off and have a, have a career all the time. And this, when the man comes home, instead of saying, darling, can I get you anything? Are you feeling tired? They say, I said for day, I did so well, I well, 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 well. And of course the man then goes away and carries on and his secretary is more sympathetic. Now you see it falls. Now come on, don't be good part. How did you manage to stay so alive and so full of optimism all these years? Because I'm head of alternative medicine. You see, I've discovered the first time I, when I went to America, I realized that we hadn't got any sort of thing here for helping people. And so I started it then. Now, of course, it's terrific. And I've got a new one, which is absolutely wonderful, which takes every, everything off your hand. I must show you this, because it really is rather wonderful. Um, you see, I've got a single line. And I'm, 80, I'm, I'm 90, 90, 94 now, 95, 96, <laughs> 96, I can't remember. 96, and I haven't got a single line on my body. And this is the new thing that I've just, just found. I'm quite excited about it.